Now, I know you'll be shocked to learn this, but there was a little bit of a different tone over at MSNBC last night after the RNC. Let's take a listen to a little bit of that coverage. The Trumps come across as if they do believe that America has a royal family, and it is them. And so it's interesting to watch them create a pageantry about the Trumps, but not about the Trumps the way that last week was, a, was about the Bidens. Last week was about the family, the cohesion, the loss, the things they've suffered, the way they've come together, the way they were brought together. The same thing with Kamala Harris, her family, the blended family. It was about them as human beings. This isn't about the Trumps as like people with friends and family and loved ones. It's about them as our American monarchical entity that you mm. cannot eliminate. That, you know, Donald Trump came out and said, say 12 more years. That's exactly what Putin's given himself, 12 more years. He's sort of, it's almost as if the election doesn't matter anymore. Because as far as Donald Trump and his family are concerned, they've established themselves as monarchs. And if they have to keep power the way monarchs do, they'll do it. So, mm, oh, wow. And Maddow and Nicole being like, mm, yeah, well, and you'll recall <laughs> last week, you know, the when we we're talking about Jill Biden, yeah. it was, oh, she feels like my mom. And I feel like I'm in the Biden's right. living and room. The Obama's Michelle Obama and Barack Obama. Same thing. And the thing that yeah. really the thing that really bugs me about all of this, I feel however you want to feel about these various politicians. And I feel all sorts of ways about these various politicians. But it's always just about those emotions and never about the substance yes. of, right? They never pointed out that, yeah, there was a lot of Biden feel-good montages and a lot of talk about the family. And I think part of that is why Americans like Joe Biden because mm -hmm. of that grief and the way that he has dealt with that and the way that he talks about that. But that was it. There was no policy. There was no agenda. There was no substance. And they never, ever talk about the substance. And I do want to be fair. I mean, they did have people on talking about Donald Trump from like a personal testimonial yeah. point of view. Right. So it's just not even accurate to say that the sum totality of the portrayal of Trump last night was like 12 more years, just like Vladimir Putin. It's just clownish the way that they go about it. It's a predetermined destination and they have to find themselves there whenever they're, they're in their analysis. Same with the DNC, same with the RNC. And yeah. you know, look, we went looking this morning, but like, did Fox beclown themselves the way that MSNBC and CNN did after the DNC? By and large, no. Now, you know, there's a whole daytime schedule to go, so I don't know what yeah. on Fox. <laughs> Who knows what Fox and Ben said this yeah, morning? The immediate, <laughs> the immediate reaction that most viewers saw, you know, when the millions were watching, was not the way that CNN and MSNBC fawning. I mean, Obama slayed me. Like, if somebody said that about Fox, about like Kimberly about Guilford, Trump or, or about Trump, you'd it, be an idiot. I'd be like. Get, <laughs> Out, out, you know, it's like, and nobody did that very much to their credit. And I think that be, the, what we've seen is that the New York Times, the Washington, the Times, the front page headline is like misleading RNC, something like that, right? The Washington Post is like in a spirit of a fire cannon of, mis, of, of falsehoods. CNN's is like, in fact, free speech. Look, maybe it's a political event. To pretend the DNC was not in any way exactly the same is gaslighting to the highest degree. And that's basically what CNN's Chris Cuomo said last night. He was just like, yeah, they're, you know, they, they lied more in one night than everybody else. Let's take a listen to what he said. It is a Jedi mind trick that I don't understand how people are not getting this. Jedi this mind trick. This isn't even R2-D2 <laughs> level thinking. But that's politics, Don. You're running for this party. I'm demonizing this party. Uh, everything that's bad is your fault. Uh, everything that's not going well on my watch, you're either lying about or you're engineering somehow on the sneaky side. Uh, and again, well, who are people going to believe? We'll see who makes the better case. And yeah, you can fact check it to death. We could fact check this convention all night. People yeah. who are saying you didn't fact check the Democrats, they are not lying the way Trump does. Yeah. Do politicians lie? Yes. Of course. Do both parties engage in it? Yes. I'll give you the full Gilfoil. Yeah. But not like Donald Trump. Yeah. Nobody lies the way this man does, has, and will that I've ever seen in politics. Yeah. So he's lying to you. He's lying. Yeah, he's lying. And, you know, the live fact checks, the constant just like trying to shove it down your throat. 
Let's say even that you want to have a viewer and others to take away who might be sympathetic to Trump that he's lying to you. Do you really think that that is the way to go about it? It never is. They're just preaching to the choir. So a couple of things. Early on in the night, it was actually, we covered that, you know, there was a portion there. There was like a stretch of maybe 15 or 20 minutes where I was like, wow, it's actually kind of good. Trump with the frontline workers, the registered nurse who's from West Virginia. There was like a string, Herschel Walker, I thought, did a really good job. There's like a string of a few people, many of them regular working people and Trump interacts with them in a way that was actually really effective. And CNN cuts in to that. And the first critique, you can't even make mm-hmm. that, this up. Dana Bash was like, well, they weren't socially distanced. <laughs> I was like, <laughs> uh, how can you, how can you take, what? like, you just, to your point about yeah. the, the destination that they know they're going to yes. reach, yeah. right? They have to, they can't possibly even acknowledge for a moment that like, actually this lands. And if he was had been messaging like this and really understood this from the beginning, this would actually be a pretty effective case. And look, I don't even disagree. I do think that Donald Trump lies in a way that is that is more and different than traditional political operators. But you can't pretend that you're unbiased when you actively institute these live fact checks yeah into one convention that you don't do in the other. And you can't just throw your hands, well, of course they lie, but well, you didn't call them out on those lies, Mm -hmm. right? We didn't see any of that. Yeah, or your brother's lies. Right, right? or your brother's lies. But but when, you know, when Joe Biden really completely whitewashed his voting record, when he talked about the Violence Against Women Act and the assault weapons ban, conveniently leaving out the crime bill, Mm -hmm. when they all made the argument that Joe Biden was going to be, you know, a champion for racial justice, where was the fact check to say, well, actually, here's his record? Or where was the New York Times, the Washington Post article that said there was no substance here, right? This was all very, okay, nice, glossy bio of Joe Biden, effective in that regard, but we still don't know what you're going to do. You never see that. And so that's why when when the Washington Post and the New York Times and CNN and MSNBC, when they actually even say things that are true about Trump, when it is an actual accurate critique, no one believes you because you've been so um, so biased and so uneven in your treatment of the two sides. And, and this doesn't just apply to Trump. Of course, in the primary, mm-hmm. we covered the same way that they do this to the anti-establishment left. They do it to left. everybody, yes. And so that's why, you know, it's just you are actually turning people into harder Trump mm-hmm. supporters by the fact that oh. you cannot grant him even one tiny little thing. The most successful portion of the evening, oh, well, they weren't socially distant. Yeah, they weren't socially distant. Come on. That's so ridiculous. <laughs> But don't worry, CNN viewers did that get that one like shining moment where Nina Turner went off on CNN. So that oh, was like yeah. the only good that's the only dose of truth that I think that they got about the entire DNC after their lineup. But, that was that was a beautiful moment. Yeah. Tomorrow on Rising, more of the RNC ah. with the Trump campaign's director of strategic communications, Mark Lauder, and also executive director of American Compass, Oren Cass. It's going to be great to talk to them. Remember to hit that subscribe button so you don't miss any of our videos. Also, don't forget to like and share as well. See you guys tomorrow. Have a great day, guys.